thermal paste, thermal paste, thermal paste. In the previous video I did, which was quite a while ago, I compared a GC Extreme against MX4. And in that video, I wanted to show that there actually can be a considerable difference between what type of thermal paste you use depending on your application. And in the case of parts that aren't overclockable, you don't have a whole lot to worry about. And in fact, you're probably better off going with something like MX4 if you're not into enthusiast overclocks. And the reason being is because you get a lot of that stuff, non-capacitive, non-conductive, and it's very easy to spread. The viscosity is pretty good. But since I did that video, you guys were requesting I take a look at more thermal paste, broaden the horizon, check out the temperatures, but also check out the amount you get, the value for money, and of course the viscosity to see which is best for enthusiasts and also which is best for hustlers. So in today's video, we're gonna be testing all that with our trusty friend here, the RTX 2080 Ti from Aorus. But on that note, Aorus did contact me after that video a while ago and they insisted that they get the card back because they actually wanted to investigate it. And I mean, for me personally, trading a faulty part for a brand new working part, kind of a no brainer. So I decided to say yes, we've got the brand new one back here. So this is gonna be our guinea pig. He's gonna be patient zero for this experiment. And also another reason why I'm picking the 2080 Ti is because it puts out a lot of heat. And so that's gonna be great for stressing these thermal paste out and also making the differences bigger if there are any. With that aside, let's get on with the contenders. And then of course, get on with the testing. So starting from left to right, we've got here no name brand, massive amount of thermal paste. I bought this on AliExpress for under $2. So you're getting a lot of thermal paste for your money. Next to that was a community recommended GD900 where people actually say this stuff performs very close to the MX4. I did get a massive tube of this for I believe $6 delivered to my door. And then beside that is Corsair's TM30, a recent addition to the thermal paste industry. They've sent uh, some over because they want me to use it in builds because they are a sponsor. And then we've got MX4, which is the staple in the industry. And the reason being is because you can get these massive tubes and it does do a pretty good job. It's non-capacitive, non-conductive, and of course the viscosity is pretty good. So it's a great option in my opinion for hustlers. Then we've got the GC Extreme, which we already know outperforms the MX4, but of course it is a little bit harder to spread and it is much more expensive than the MX4. Then besides that, it's probably one of the most interesting in the bunch. This is the Kingpin Cooling. A lot of LN2 overclockers swear by this stuff, but apparently it doesn't do good in normal ambient temperatures. And then the last two on the list is the Noxua NTH1. It's the only Noxua thermal paste I have around here, but we'll test it anyway. And then there's some Thermal Grizzly. I think it is Cryonaut. Well, it's the only one that you're allowed to put on the actual silicon itself because the rest of them on their website aren't actually recommended for putting on direct uh, silicon to cooler. And since this is a 2080 Ti, I ain't risking anything. But with all that out of the way, let the games begin. That's Italian for let the games begin. And we're gonna be testing out a baseline first for the 2080 Ti to know how this thing performs out of the box with a set fan speed and what temperatures it gets. So let's get on with the show. And here we are the next day with all the results compiled. This one is actually very interesting. Stayed up till 2 a.m. as well to get this testing done because this is the only chance I'm going to get before Computex and you guys really wanted to see this video. So if you appreciate it enough, hit that like button a little bit early for us, but let's get on with the results and I'm gonna get straight into it because we've got two clear winners here after testing this on the 2080 Ti. And the Kingpin cooling solution came in at number one getting 69 degrees maximum. Now I was told this stuff was only good for LN2 situations. And if you're cooling it with air and water cooling, it wouldn't do as well, but it's beating all the other pace here by a little bit. 
And although it's expensive, it was beating out GC Extreme, which came in second place with 71 degrees, but the two degree difference really shows that this stuff is on top. So there is a reason that everyone at LN2 events was using this stuff, and when I saw that at the Galax live overclocking event last year, I knew I had to get some, so I actually bought this off someone at the event for 10 bucks. I'm like, hey, can I quickly have that tube? Because I was rounding up all the best of the best thermal paste. And then we're coming in with the next best thing, and this was a recommendation from you guys in the previous video. You said, Brian, there's these sellers on AliExpress selling the GD900, and you can get this stuff, I think I got this for like six or seven dollars for a tube of 30 grams, and I didn't expect much out of it, but when we put it on the 2080 Ti, I was shocked because this stuff is going to be, even though the Kingpin cooling's number one for enthusiasts who wanna get the best overclocks and the best temperatures, I'm gonna be giving this stuff kind of like the number one in general because it's so easy to spread. It had the best spreading qualities of all the thermal paste I tested here in that the viscosity was just right. It was a little bit better than MX4, which I'd say came in second place for viscosity, but you get 30 grams of this stuff and its cooling performance is pretty much better than MX4. And I'm definitely gonna be ordering myself more of these because I'm just shocked at how good they are. If you're a hustler and you gotta do a lot of builds and you're constantly changing over coolers, cleaning up coolers or cleaning up old thermal paste, this stuff is great, non-conductive, non-capacitive. And on that note, I'm pretty sure all the thermal paste I tested here today are non-conductive, non-capacitive, because I did put a lot of thermal paste on because you have to with the 2080 Ti since it's just the silicon exposed to the cooler. So there we have it. Number one, GD900 for hustlers. Number one for cooling, Kinpin cooling. Now I will point out some other things about the other thermal paste. And that is that the uh, Thermal Grizzly paste that I got gifted from Dave up in Brisbane. Uh, Dave, I don't know why you gifted me this. It was an empty tube. <laughs> when I went to put it on, I was like, what's going on? I've just got an empty tube here and uh, pretty much there was no thermal paste left. So maybe if I redo this video again, it's going to be all you guys in the comments with what thermal paste you wanna see in the next comparison. But on that note, let's talk about some of the other thermal paste in this comparison. The MX4, it's a staple, it works pretty good, viscosity is great, it's a reliable choice and it has been for years due to what it is. So I can still recommend that, but the GD900 again is just beating it out in every aspect and that stuff is a lot better value for money too and how much you get. As for the Corsair TM30, you guys are the channel sponsors here, but I gotta point this thermal paste out, man, it's not that good at all. You're getting, I think, three grams for $8, and the viscosity isn't as good as MX4 or as good as the GD900, and the cooling performance was just as good as the MX4, which, keep in mind, the MX4 and the TM30 did fall one degree behind, the stock thermal paste on the Gigabyte card. But on that note, the stock thermal paste on the RTX 2080 Ti Aorus here, it was horrible to clean off. Like this is when I first opened up the cooler. I took ages to clean this stuff off. So whatever Gigabyte Aorus are using on their graphics cards, it does work well, but it is really annoying if you wanna clean it up and put some uh, Kingpin cooling on there, for example. But the other stuff to talk about was the Noctua NTH1. And this stuff was okay. It was actually pretty smooth to spread. So if you love doing the spread method above all else, then this stuff was actually pleasantly good. Uh, and the temperatures were pretty much run of the mill. Now the last thermal place to talk about is the $2 solution. As you guys saw in the graphs, this was absolutely horrible. It pretty much failed the test. As soon as I saw this going up to 87 degrees, I was like, no way. Turned and shut the tests off straight away. And I mean, for $2, it did, I guess, kind of work. But in that sense, I wouldn't recommend it at all when the GD900 exists, and that actually does a proper job of being thermal paste. So this stuff here is pretty much for, I don't even know who it's for, I wouldn't use this stuff at all. Absolutely horrible, but the viscosity was half decent. But yeah, after this video, I'm pretty much chucking this straight in the bin. It's uh, hazardous, because you don't want your parts overheating, because that will pretty much cost you more than $2 in the long run. And lastly, besides the cheap thermal paste across the board here, I looked at the sustained clock speeds. The stock paste, the TM30, and also the Arctic MX4 scored 1,935 megahertz sustained, and then the rest of the thermal paste scored 1,950 megahertz. If that's anything to go by, I know it's a very subtle difference, but we are getting down now to where the good thermal paste are really good, so there will be those subtle differences to report on. And so here we are at the conclusion now with the two winners, as we said before, Kingpin Cooling for Enthusiasts, 
which does cost a little bit more than the rest of the stuff. And then we've got the GD900 for general usage and most applications as it did a really good job. Compared to the last video we did, I really only looked at GC Extreme and also MX4, but GC Extreme was what the pro overclockers used to use before Kingpin Cooling's uh, solution came out. So if anything to go by, we've just got the new updated metas right here, but it was very impressive to see that we do have two new champions in the scene. In terms of the other thermal paste, as I said before as well, guys, let me know in the comments for the next update what you wanna see, but I'm also gonna ask for your feedback on what to test with next. Because I do know one thing when it comes to testing these thermal paste out, I do like to get the smallest piece of silicon area that puts out the highest amount of heat. So in this case with the 2080 Ti, the silicon, the actual GPU portion itself is massive. It's really big. Even though it puts out a lot of heat, that area, the surface area is actually quite big. So if you guys have suggestions on what would be the smallest area for the most highest heat output, I'd love to know because then that would create more of a bottleneck in terms of the thermal paste to the cooler. And on that note, I'd like to have the cooler massive as well. So we do get these subtle differences exposed even more. I'm not sure if the 2080 Ti did the best job in today's comparison, but on that note, I did set the fan speeds to 100% on all these tests here to create an apples to apples environment, as well as keeping the ambient temperatures at 25 degrees C. So that's gonna keep everything within a controlled environment. And so we did see these differences come out with these thermal paste. So it was very enlightening for me. You're gonna see now two new metas, which kind of sucks because in the last video, I did go out and buy a heap of GC Extreme, but then I didn't realize Kingpin Cooling's thermal paste existed. And I didn't even know the GD900 existed. But of course, if you have some Jella GC Extreme, it's still gonna be amazing for cooling down those enthusiast parts. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then just like I said before, be sure to slap a like on the video. And if you're enjoying the content that much, you may wish to subscribe, hit that bell notification to get the videos the moment they drop. Or if you want the inside scoop, be sure to check us out on Instagram where I did post up a video of all the wet tissues we went through, the alcohol wipes. It was crazy the amount of thermal paste we went through with this video and just cleaning it up and reapplying all the thermal paste just took so long but it was worth it in the end. We did get the conclusion and the results for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And with that said, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.